STDs, sexual transmitted diseases, STI, sexual transmitted infection. What are they? Can I get them? How will I know if I have them? Yes, it's very possible. STDs have been increasing across the world at an alarming rate. In 2017, the Mayo Clinic in the United States published figures of the numbers of infections that was treated. 20 million Americans were treated for STDs. Out of this 20 million, 10 million were under the age of 24, which means that we have a younger population that are more sexually active and they don't use protective measures. Hi, I'm Dr. Luke, and we are going to look at the causes, the treatment, the prevention, and the complications of STDs. So, firstly, let's start. What type of STDs do we get? The two main groups of STDs that are relevant are the bacteria and the viruses. In the bacteria group, we get chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis, which are the most common ones. Syphilis has been around for many, many, many years, and it's very easy to treat, so it's not really a difficult one, and we don't see very high numbers of that nowadays. Chlamydia and gonorrhea, however, are quite different. Chlamydia and gonorrhea over the years have become very resistant against the normal treatment. So that type of antibiotics that was used maybe 10 years ago just does not work anymore. Hence the World Health Organization prescribed a dual treatment, which means two antibiotics to use for the treatment of chlamydia and gonorrhea. The main viruses that we get are HIV, HPV, which stands for human papillomavirus, which is the genital wart virus, herpes type 2, and hepatitis, mainly hepatitis B. Now, the big problem with the viruses is that they, are, most of the time, they are there for life. We don't have a cure for these viruses. We can manage the symptoms and we can manage the condition, but we cannot cure them. And that has huge implications for you and your future partner, anyone that's going to be in contact with you, sexual contact, over the years to come. If we look at treatment for these conditions, like I said, chlamydia and gonorrhea and syphilis are treated by antibiotics. And it's fairly easy to get hold of that. If you see your doctor or a clinic where it can be prescribed, you can get treatment for that. It gets treated straight away. It's cured and you're not going to get it again, except if you have contact again and pick up the condition again. The viruses, however, are quite different. HIV can lead to AIDS, if not managed properly with ARVs. HPV is a very difficult problem across the world, because what this virus does, the ward virus, if you get exposure to the virus, the human papilloma virus, affects the cervix in a very negative way over time. It can change the cells and the cervical cells can become cancerous. And this is a huge problem in females, especially if they've had HPV exposure at a young age. Therefore, we now get vaccinations against the HPV where young girls are getting vaccinated to prevent them from getting the HPV. The problem, however, is we know viruses are clever, they're genetic material, so they mutate and they can cause new mutations which might not respond to the vaccination in future. So that is a real big problem and um, you need to be very, very cautious of that one. The herpes virus is very uncomfortable. It's a virus that flares up whenever your immune system is down or when you get very stressed out and you get these sores, almost like a fever blister that you would get on your lip. Um, but it's a genital ulcer and it's really, really painful and uncomfortable. It can get treated with an antiviral tablet and you can get rid of the, the acute condition, but they can always come back. And again, that then exposes your partner in future to that same virus. Hepatitis B is also a virus that can affect 
you in different ways. It can affect, it can affect your liver and you can be a carrier and it can be transmitted to your sexual partner as well in the future. So the next question is, how do we prevent this? Well, the most obvious answer is abstinence. If you're not going to be sexually active with someone that's got a sexual disease, then you're not going to get one. And I think that is something that is not emphasized enough that we need to be incredibly careful with our decisions when we decide to be sexually active. Prevention in choosing a long-term partner is really crucial for not getting sexual diseases through all through your life. Symptoms. How will you know that you've got an STD? Well, this is one of the other big problems. Many of these diseases can be completely asymptomatic. What does that mean? It means you are just not going to know that you've got it. So if you have high-risk sexual practices or multiple partners and exposure to basically all their previous uh, sexual partners, you can pick up these conditions and have it for quite a while before you actually know that there are symptoms. And they can be very dangerous. They can be very dangerous in pregnancy. They can cause a lot of complications for babies and newborns. They can even cause blindness, some of them, in, in babies. If you do get symptoms, it can vary from lower back pain, abdominal pain, burning urine. You can even have a discharge. Sexual contact can be painful and uncomfortable. So there are quite a few symptoms that you would see, especially with the bacterial ones. The viruses you're probably not going to have any symptoms. You might see a wart, you might see a blister, but that, that's about it. So from the virus's point of view, again, they are the difficult ones. So as you can see, we're dealing with a really serious situation. And because of the lack of knowledge, people perish, and especially young people perish. They don't always understand what the consequences are. A lot of people think that if they prevent a pregnancy, being sexually active is going to be perfectly fine. But the complications in that can be huge and can be devastating for your future, for a future family that you're planning, and for a future long-term partner that you're planning as well. So I think the message of the day is really think carefully. Think very carefully about decisions. If you decide to be sexually active, use a barrier method like a male or female condom, and even that is not always 100% safe. It can break and you can have exposure. If something like that happens, what do you do? Well, there's a thing called post-exposure prophylaxis. It's a protocol that gets followed. You get a treatment for the bacterial exposure and risk, which is a combination of three antibiotics to treat all those things that might develop, and then you also might have the option, especially if it was a high risk exposure, to get an ARV that prevents you from getting the HIV virus. And that you'll have to take for a month and then get rechecked to see that you've not contracted the HIV virus. So I hope this was really of value and that it taught you something about these very dangerous conditions that are on the increase across the world. Please share this with someone that you might think that are, that are at risk, someone that really don't know what the risks are. Um, subscribe to the channel and like so that more people get informed, so that more, more people know what this is about. And in this case, stay safe and stay healthy.